Today we're talking about uh, 2.5D. So what is 2.5D? Well, it's a pretty cool effect um, that's been around for quite a while in uh, motion graphics. And it's basically where you take like flat artwork and that could be like photos, it could be graphics, it could be typography, uh, it could be footage, and you make that flat element look three-dimensional, uh, usually by stacking layers and things like that in back in 3D space. So I'm gonna show you how uh, some tr tips and tricks for how to make your uh, 2.5D really come alive um, and kind of explain a little bit about it. Um, if you don't really understand how the camera works, the 3D camera um, or how 3D layers work, I would highly advise you to go to um, YouTube, check out uh, 3D layer techniques and 3D camera techniques. Those are two videos um, I created way back in the day when I started motion science. And they're very, uh, they're 20 minutes each, they're very in-depth, uh, they're very well done. Spent a lot of time creating those tutorials. So 3, 3D camera techniques and 3D layer techniques are the two that you need to check out if you don't understand 3D inside of After Effects. Also, I would plug AE Academy um, Volumes 1 and 2 if you don't know all the ins and outs of working with 3D stuff as well. So let's make a new composition called Tunnel. And it's my typical HD TV 1080, 24 frames per second. Five seconds is fine. Click OK. Here we are. And we're just going to start by creating um, a shape layer. OK, so I'm just going to double click this box up here. And by double clicking, it creates a shape layer. Um, you know that from AE Academy Volume 1. And I'm going to open up the path here and change this to, let's just make it 1080 by 1080. And it's got a five pixel uh, stroke on it, which is fine. Um, it'll work for this example. And we're gonna make it 3D right here. And then we're going to switch our views to two views. And you can do this a lot of different ways. I like to work two views horizontal. So there we are, we're at top view here, which you can see here, top view. And this is our active view here. When we add a camera, this will become the active camera view. But uh, it's easy for me to work within the top view or the custom view one um, to really like set up 3D inside of After Effects because that is one of the downsides. Um, at least at the time that I recorded this, is that there's not a different type of interface for working within 3D inside of After Effects. It's kind of, you have to get used to it. Once you get used to it, it's easy to work within. Um, some people, a lot of people complain about, oh, I can't build 3D inside of After Effects. It's too hard to work with. Well, I've been doing it since it came out. I mean, how long ago was that? Over, oh, it was a long time ago, okay? Um, so here we go. So here's Shape Layer 1. I'm gonna hit P for position. It's at a Z distance or a Z position of zero. Okay, so it's 960 by 540, 960 on the X, 540 on the Y, and zero at the Z. So I'm just gonna Command D to duplicate this, and I'm just gonna start offsetting these layers back in 3D space. Um, I'm OCD about working with even numbers when it comes to 3D. Um, I just find it easier to manage and easier to work with that way. It's just my weird thing. So um, in this case, I'm doing a thousand pixels just so I can really kind of show you what I'm trying to do here. But you could work with a hundred pixels. So here it is a hundred pixels. I'm um, just slightly back in space. And you can see it here. If I switch this uh, back to top, you can see here, here's the second layer pushed back. Okay. So, um, go to a thousand. So all of a sudden it's gone off of here. And that's where a lot of people get kind of hung up with two and a half D, three D. Uh, if you zoom out, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate it again, P for position. And I'm just doing, like I said, I'm OCD. So I like things to be even. So I'm just going to do a thousand pixel increments. Uh, we'll duplicate again. And I'm just going to keep going through these here. 3,000, so you can see it's up here at the top now. Duplicate again. 4,000, duplicate again, P for position. 
just repeating myself here. You can see there it is. So here is zero, right? And we're going back a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Um, let's actually keep going back. Six thousand. We'll go back to ten position. Seven thousand. Duplicate P for position. Eight thousand. Duplicate position. Nine thousand. And you can see how it's changing over here. One more time, and we'll make this ten thousand. So. There's 10,000 pixels back. So, I mean, you can go quite a ways back here. I, I would never recommend that you go like, you know, beyond like 50,000 pixels back. I mean, you're getting way back in here when you do that. And at some point you're gonna hit a limit where it's not gonna let you continue to zoom out and see your layers. Um, at the same time, I could take like this layer here and I could duplicate it. And I'm just gonna bring it underneath my starting point just for um, so it's clear of what I'm doing here. Uh, I could move it negative a thousand. So negative a thousand is going to bring it forward and down here. So let's go negative one thousand. You can see all of a sudden that one popped in front here. Here it is the very edge of it, and duplicate it again. Bring that one down, and I'm just ordering them on the timeline here just uh, to keep things kind of clear. Negative 2000 is gonna pop it down again. And that's probably good for now. So you can see here's the top view, like I said, switch to custom view one. There you can see I'm all kind of zooming back here and I'm holding on the space bar and clicking and dragging and that's how my hand pops up here. So here's our layers back in 3D space, okay? Pretty simple, looks like we're kind of like, it's like a square tunnel we're going through here. So next, let me show you what happens when you add a camera, okay? So we went to layer, new, and then camera. Now, there's some settings in here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off depth of field. This may or may not be turned on for you. Um, there's one node cameras and there's two node cameras, okay? So again, if you don't understand all this stuff, go to 3D camera techniques. Um, and I'll show you just really quickly the difference here. I prefer to work with one node cameras I don't like, two node cameras have points of interest, which I don't like. Uh, sometimes I use them, and I will use them in a couple examples here so you can see, maybe I'll use them, we'll see. Preset, custom, 15, 20, 24, again, 3D camera techniques. Um, I like to typically just go 28 to 35. That's just my own personal preference. It's just longer or longer lenses are down here, so we're, you know, we're. They're a much longer lens. These are much wider angle lenses. Okay, it's just like a real world camera. So 35 millimeter. Watch what happens here when I add this camera. See how it kind of changed the perspective. Things kind of went back. They look like they, they look like all of a sudden the layers kind of went back in space, but they didn't. It's just the the camera which we see here. If I go, if I have the camera selected and I go back up to camera settings, layer camera settings. If I change this to like 50. Watch what happens here. See how that's it. All of a sudden I'm using a longer lens. So we're more zoomed in. If I go up to like 135, see that? So the camera is still here. It's still at a position right here, but the lens is really long. So I'll go back to 35 and watch right here what happens. 35, boom, there we go. If we go the opposite way and we go up here, like 20, you can see here the the area of viewing is gonna be much wider here. It's also, you're gonna see more here. So boom, there we go. So um, maybe let's just stick, let's, let's go with 20 millimeters here. Actually, no, we're not, I lied. Let's go back to 35. So 35, there we go. Click okay, there we go, okay, so um, it looks pretty much like it looked before, little bit of difference there. But the cool thing is now that when I hit P for position, I'm gonna go ahead and close these down. So just we can focus on the camera here. If I start messing with my position here, I'm just going side to side here. You can see how much more interesting it is to look at layers 
pushed back in Z space, right? So we're working with, with 3D here. It's 3D, two and a half D, I like to call it. I'm gonna go up and down here. And we'll use the Z. So here I'm zooming in and out. Undo that. I can also take this and select Z and move it this way. Uh, I can select X here and move side to side here. Same with Y like this. And the other way is I can use my camera tools, which are up here in my tool palette. So we've got the unified camera tool, orbit camera, track and track, track X, Y and track Z. Um, if you hit C on your keyboard, which you can see here, it cycles through these. So I'm not a huge fan of the unified camera tool. Uh, personally, I like to use the rotation tool, the track X and Y and the track Z. That's just my own personal preference. But again, I'm tracking Z, so I'm clicking and dragging. Back is zooming out. Dragging forward is zooming in. C for rotation, I'm just clicking and dragging. And you can see here what we've got going on. Pretty interesting stuff. Let's talk now about, actually, let's just set a few keyframes. Let's do that. So I'm gonna set a keyframe there and we're gonna zoom in and we're just gonna do like a quick kind of push back. So into my timeline and I'm clicking and dragging here. You know, maybe something like that. And I am at half res here. So if it looks a little bit pixelated, that's why. So there you go. We're just doing a very simple kind of pull back through the boxes. So now something else that's really cool about working with 2.5D, 3D inside of After Effects is here under camera options, we've got our zoom, which is here. And we've also got our depth of field right below that. So it's turned off. So if I turn it on, it doesn't look like much changed here, right? So over here, you can see there's this whole other plane that appeared here, okay? That's our focus plane, right? This big box right here is because watch when I turn it off, it's gone. When I turn it on, there it is. So our focus plane is right here, focus distance. It's pushed way out there. So if I pull this back, you can see here's our, our viewing plane right here. Our focus plane is way beyond that. Uh, if I go to, let's say the top view here, uh, see it's way out there. So there's our focus plane. This is our field of view. This is our focus plane. I'm gonna bring that way down. Actually, I'm just gonna type in like a thousand. So now our focus plane is way down inside of here, inside of our viewing area. Okay, so let's say we want, let's back it up to zero. And let's say we wanna start with our focus plane on this guy right here, okay? So I'm just going to extend the focus plane so it lines up with this square, which which one is that is right here. Oh, it's the one that's barely on the edge of the screen here. Uh, it's layer nine. Uh, by selecting these ones on the top view, I can pick different layers down here. I can also select them down here until I find the one I want, which is right there. Perfect. Okay. So again, we've got depth of field on, you can see it here, our focus distance is set, but there's not much depth of field happening here. And a trick that I use, I'm sure most motion designers use, is we just crank up the aperture. So that's our next setting here, it's the aperture. So it's set to 17.7, and that's just a default setting for the 35 millimeter preset. Okay, so if I change this to like a 50 millimeter preset, the aperture changes right here to 25.3. If I change it to 80, it changes to 40.5. The, the zoom also changes, okay? So um, that's just a preset number for the 35 millimeter camera. All I'm gonna do is crank this up. And as I crank it up, you can see here, things are out of focus back here, right? So now if I preview this, our preview is a little bit slower now because we've got depth of field going on, but you can see there's actually some, some blurriness or some depth of field going on. Now it doesn't look amazing because I'm working at half res. 
I go to full res, it looks a little bit better. But the other thing to keep in mind is that the iris shape is set to fast rectangle. This is a standard preset. This is like the standard default for the 3D camera inside of After Effects. And it's not the greatest look. A lot of times I can get by with using fast rectangle and I do get by using it. But if you want a really nice depth of field, you don't want to stick with fast rectangle. Part of the problem here is that our, our stroke width is very thin. So it's trying to blur this very thin stroke width here and it's just not looking so hot. So, you know, you can pick any of these. Hexagon works for me a lot of times. So you can see all of a sudden there's a little bit nicer depth of field. I'm gonna undo that and watch these corners especially. So that's fast blur, fast rectangle. It just doesn't look so nice. So hexagons there, um, it looks great. So again, I could uh, preview this and uh, maybe actually what I do is I turn a little bit of motion blur on here just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Motion blur a lot of times, you know, ha helps add that little bit of realism uh, to our CG. It's not always necessary though. I don't always use it, but uh, let's take a look at this. Okay, so there we go. There is our very simple uh, tunnel setup with uh, just shape layers with a very thin five pixel th uh, stroke. Can't talk today. Um, and up the field, just doing a very simple pullback. But you can see here the power of 3D layers uh, and 3D cameras inside of After Effects.